All right, in this video, we're going to take some live trades with the Russell and the Dowie Mini. I've got my trade station chart set up showing me both charts, the Russell on top, the Dowie Mini down here. And I'm the trade four positions using my Thinkorswim Active Trader platform. And I've got a template set up so that when I place an order, you can see that there are three targets up above. So I'm going to cancel one. I have two positions on that third target per my template. And so I'll cancel one of them. So that'll end up being my trailer. And then down below, you can see I've got my stop in place as well. So when I place an order, you can see it says buy for stop right there on that little green button there. That's telling me I'm placing a four position trade. And like I showed you, I only have three targets. Two of them are on the third target. So I'll have to delete one of them. But all four are on one stop. So using this template, I'm able to trade a four position approach. All right, so we'll give it a try. I'm going to do that with the Dowie Mini as well. We're just waiting for the session to start. We'll see how it goes. The market's getting ready to open. I'm looking at what we have here on the Dow E-mini, and you can see that there is a trade to get in sync with, much like we did with crude oil right there. And the long is at 18106. I also have a possible trade here on the Russell, and that one is at 1231.6. It might be hard to get both those trades executed simultaneously. We have a high at 106. The entry is at 106. It's already broken through once. And there we go, 106. Let's see if we can grab it. Oh, that template's wrong. <laughs> okay. Get out of that one. All right, well, it worked out. Let me get that template set. Okay, there we go. All right. <laughs> I ended up with five ticks. I didn't reset my template. All right, you got to do that, that's for sure. So the stop is at 18089. Let's put that in the right place first. 18089. Now let's get the targets right. Target one is at 15. Target two is at 21. And it looks like I got two there. All right, let's change this. That goes up. This goes down to 15. Uh, 21, I mean. And target three is at 27. I got to get rid of one of those. All right, well, target one was hit. Obviously, I'm recording this, so I can't move my chart high enough. Target two just got hit. And target three, and both my positions, because I wasn't able to trail. I just couldn't separate the two. Nevertheless, still a good trade, $355. And counterpunch is one and done. The Russell hasn't done anything. Let's go over to the Russell now. Okay, we're watching the final trade of the Russell, the power of quitting trade right here. I'm sorry I missed the whole session. I thought that I was recording. I had hit the pause button while I was trying to set myself up to trade the Russell a little bit better. And I forgot to turn on the recorder. <laughs> Unfortunately, we missed the whole session. But a lot happened, and I'll show you. Uh, first of all, so we don't get confused, we don't need the directional indicator for the Russell. Okay, I found it works great. Counterpunch works great without it. So the first trade of the day looked like it was going to be this purple one here. But remember, when you're in a chop zone, you don't want to take trades against the 50 EMA. Okay, so you would have filtered that out. Even though it did go past the first target, it went 
10 ticks. I think it did. It went from uh, 1229.9 to 1229. So it only went nine ticks. Okay, one tick away from being able to move your stop. You want to go that 10 tick minimum. And you could see that it would have come up and you would have hit the stop. That stop was adjusted around the key level. It actually came up and hit the 0.5 over here. See, and then it came down again. The stop was at 0.6 working around the key level and it looked like it was going to do good but it, it found the 50 EMA and found support and went up and that's why when we're in the chop zone we don't want to trade against the 50 EMA so the first trade of the day was this one the next purple trade it's purple because it's a second chance failed swing here are the failed here's your first failed swing right you have your counter punch way down here and then it comes down and that's your first failed swing. The second chance failed swing came down a little bit lower. So it's lower than the one group to the left, but it's still higher than the second group to its left. That's why it's a second chance counterpunch trade. Okay? That's what happened. And it, it triggered in and it came up and it didn't get close enough to the first target. If it would have went two more ticks, it would have been within, you know, getting 90% of the way. I could have moved my stop up, but because it didn't get close enough, I couldn't move my stop up. So then we got to this particular setup here, and if you look at the time, we're almost two minutes in front of a red-labeled report, consumer confidence. So I cannot initiate a new trade. If I could, it would have come down and hit its targets, but I still have to respect that entry. So I'm trying to protect my long position, so I made a two-tick adjustment on the entry. The entry is at 1230.9. I moved my stop up from here to here to 1230.7. And normally I would stop and reverse and go short at 1230.7. I also have confirmation on my signal line down here crossing over. So a lot of reasons to stop and reverse, you see, and I'm not in the chop zone anymore. So I don't, I don't have to worry about trading against the 50. That trade worked perfect, but notice that those bars are right when the red labeled report came out, right at 10 o'clock. Both of them. It moved so fast, and you don't get filled. You can't get filled because of the, the news coming out. So that's why we stand down five minutes in front of news. So I respected the entry cut my risk I would have lost the whole amount but I moved my stop up and only lost a partial between here and here so now I'm looking for a new trade after the five minutes and there looks like a possible long here but the confirmation line the signal line didn't cross over so there's no setup the next trade is this one and that one spikes up and fills at 1231.6 that's a failed swing level because we have the counter punch here and then the first sw failed swing level here. So I call that a level one failed swing level, okay, because it's the first one after the counter punch. And it looks like, you know, we might be still dealing with some chop, but the trade holds, it pushes higher, it hits target one, it hits target two, it almost hits target three. And then it ultimately does. Now target three is at 1235.7. We got as high as 1235.5. So missing it by two ticks, you're probably going to trade for profit. You can mark it out of one of your targets, or you can put your stop at target two. Or you could just hold it and be patient because the jump line has moved up. You do have a risk-free position. So you could just be patient let it keep going, and that's what would have happened. So either way, you get a nice winner, and then here's your stop. The stop is at 1234.4 on the trailer, and it's still going. It hasn't stopped out yet. But this losing trade, cutting, it, cutting the loss because we had to respect the stop and reverse, not going short because we're in front of news, kept the loss very small here so that when we get the second trade, which is a full winner, it's a much bigger winner, you see, and so that's power of quitting, regardless of what happens there. It just stopped out 
at 1234.4. So now that trade is over, and it's another winning session for the Russell. And it took two trades. Just had to think it through. You have to take what price action is telling you. I know it takes a little practice, but the system is doing it. You lean on the system, and you just write down your rules so that you know what you're not supposed to do. Always glance at them, and the more you do it, you get the repetition, and pretty soon it becomes like riding a bicycle, and it's just the way you trade. You don't have to think about it too much. Of course, when it's brand new, you got to think through some of these things, but trust me, it will come to you. The strategy is not very hard. All right, I hope you enjoyed the videos today. See you on the next one.